going on boys and girls it's Winkly back with another YouTube video ladies and gentlemen welcome to how to run a very very specialized version of Windows on very old hardware today we'll be going through how to get UEFI working on really really old hardware this is x58 a platform from 2009 we have an i7 960 24 gigs DDR3 and an RTX 3060 believe it or not and we're running this all on the Gigabyte X58A UD7, one of the top of the line motherboards from back in the day where UEFI isn't officially supported as a booting uh, system, and this is not even a UEFI BIOS for one, and uh, it, you got all this janky 3 terabyte mess to even get hard drives working on this over that size. So uh, to get this all working, you can see this is actually running UEFI mode, with Gigabyte's uh, X58A and this is actually i7-960 this is not fake you get a device manager everything is running as the way it should which means you'll be able to get the latest even Windows 11 running on this uh, piece of potato uh, you got your RTX 3060 over here you got your processors over here all glorious 4 cores, 4 threads at 3 point like 4 gigahertz and uh, we also got the latest NVIDIA drivers running which is, well, quite amazing. So, uh, this is the, the shop I got, running uh, the workshop. All the test benches set up here, got some computers running away, some 12th gen niceties, and we got, of course, the good old gold. It's glorious, glorious X58 platform that everyone loves, and the most reliable one, too. This one had a, a crap ton of rust over here that I cleaned up and uh, a little bit more uh, cockroach mess all over the board from a customer and uh, yeah we'll be going through all this uh, this is all set up perfectly running fine no blue screens I've got the memory running at 1600 megahertz uh, CL10 which is very basic and uh, we'll restart and we'll show you exactly how to set this it's a one or two minute task you just have to know where to go so the first thing you have to do is you have to set the BIOS to uh, as close to UEFI as you can honestly you can even have a legacy BIOS it does not matter because all the BIOSes up from about 2006 or 7 will have UEFI somewhere built in a very very primitive version of EFI that is it's not very crazy but it will work 99% of the time these boards post uh, socket 775 Possibly even going back to the, um, oh, Soccer 487. That could even work too. Or is it 478? I can't remember exactly. Yeah, even the Pentium 4s from back then could do something crazy like that. So, uh, this is all running fine and dandy. I'm on the wrong menu. You go to integrated peripherals on these old award BIOSes. And you go, uh, go ahead, get rid of extreme hard drive. You don't need that. You go enable IDE on every single set of controller you have. IDE! And then, second of all, you need to have legacy mode, right? Legacy and IDE, two of the most important ones. And then you have SATA 3, which this one is plugged into. She said, uh, number 3, buried in there. And yeah, if you don't have that, well, you could always use SATA 2, even SATA 1, I think pretty much works. So, but SATA 3 has trouble working unless you set the firmware selection to on chip. And you need to set the RAID mode to bypass, I'm fairly sure. And uh, everything else you can just leave enabled and set the IDE. Now, you'd be surprised because actually IDE is a more advanced or more, um, you know, grown up version than uh, AHCI. At this point in time, it's more uh, established and more, uh, you know, just bug free and worked out. AHCR at this point in time was too new to be stable enough for uh, UEFI, so I don't think they just bothered at all to get this thing up and running. I've tried to do it before, but uh, you will have like orange bars running across the screen when you try to boot it into AHCI. It just doesn't seem to work. But the uh, the benefits of UEFI, okay, the booting speed and everything uh, related to that, still seems to come to pass here. It's a bit of a hybrid legacy UEFI implementation. Uh, I've got my 500 gig NVMe testing stick and uh, some heat up Wi-Fi, shout out to those guys, they work pretty well. 
Uh, then old Gigabyte, oh my lord, these motherboards, even the new Gigabyte motherboards still work very reliably, very well designed, they're all heavily fleshed out. X58 UD7, you got to get on that as well. And uh, these boards, I have taken Xeon's X5678, uh, 75s, they have overclocked all the way from 3 gigahertz to 4.8. 6, nearly 4.7 gigahertz on 6 cores. I of course had to delit them and liquid metal them on both the actual die itself and then to the cooler. Uh, I used a 240mm custom loop CLC, kind of like that. And uh, if you had a 360mm, good for you, you could probably push it even further. If you had a 480mm, well, just go for broke at that point. I think it was a... Uh, what is it? 100... 180... something like that, who knows. Well, um... But yeah, 140mm fans, yeah, you need a... I think a 420... Yeah, 420mm CLC to get this thing to potentially 4.7 or above gigahertz. And you need to also have something for uh, calling the VRM. These ones have custom thermal pads I've placed on. And uh, as you can see, there you go. UEFI Windows 10. And uh, when you go to update Windows... It will uh, do so very easily. And you can even install Windows 11 on this, which is the best thing ever since sliced bread. Uh, you check for updates. And of course, this is BS, you don't need to worry about this, just get the Ghost Spectre version of Windows 11. And uh, yeah, if you're masochistic, but I wouldn't suggest getting Windows 11 either way. Uh, Windows 10 Ghost Spectre on the other hand, very good, works extremely well. This is the uh, lightweight version, custom tailored by myself to my own specs. It's uh, currently not available for download, it's a commercial kind of thing only that I've designed up for uh, potential customers of my services. I build computers, and uh, it's a fairly fun task. Although very stressful nowadays, the economy is in shambles, people are uh, barely able to afford your average 1.5k computer, let alone anything over 2 and yeah, everything's still pretty cool we got a 200 gig SSD here that's cloned off of this uh, main machine which is just about to be closed up we got your little hot swap drive bays here that I've kind of fashioned out of a deprecated hot swap thingo <laughs> just uh, double side taped the SATA adapter to the end of that which is working quite well the match gear and reflect, and uh, yeah, uh, of course this setup is nothing compared to this, but this is for a whole other budget range, and hopefully going to be my personal editing and uh, kind of transcribing computer in the future as a main daily driver. This is running an i5 10600K. The prices for these have come down so much over the last few months. Um, I know the i7s are coming out for even 300 and. 50 AUD or some crazy crazy number which is uh, nearly pre-2012 levels of pricing post uh, pre-inflation surprisingly enough and uh, yeah have a look so everything's running with your windows potentially even updating here updates available you get 21H2 running on this easily uh, I know 21H2 will like to mess things up if you don't have UEFI already so uh, yeah just keep your heads up for that they changed the partitions all the way around the place for no reason. Uh, let me get this management up here. So yeah, this EFI partition, 9 out of 10 times, will end up at the end of your drive after you upgrade your system from legacy to UEFI, or even if you just install Windows from the get-go. This is a really big pain in the ass. It happens all the time. So uh, I always like to clone it with Macri and Reflect, I like to drag the EFI into the second partition and then the data partition to the third instead of the second. And that seems to resolve itself after one or two drive repairs. And it's actually uh, been able to kind of convert back and forth between Legacy and UEFI. Yeah, fairly pain free. Uh, this Windows image actually I had to spend nearly a whole day or two on just to convert from Legacy because it had a missing bootloader or whatever the hell that was. And yeah, the Windows is still a bit of a pain in the ass, but at the very least, it functions. Windows 10 will load on pretty much every computer that works. And uh, Windows 11 is just the same, except Windows 11 has way buggier drivers, and uh, 9 out of 10 times is not going to work just as well. So yeah, here we go. This is our current test bench setup. We've got a Silverstone 700 watt, 80 plus watt, 24 gigs of RAM, Glorious Old X58. 
We've got a uh, uh, 12th gen i5, 10600K, hopefully you're overclocking this later to 5.2 GHz on the cache and core, uh, most likely on the cache only because I only really care about cache. Uh, <laughs> and um, this one's a client's power supply, hopefully getting traded in soon. And this is a uh, Z170 with a Chinese EM CPU, a QNCT, I believe, 6 cores and 12 threads. This thing also runs beautifully, can support Windows 11, and uh, yeah, everything here, believe it or not, will support UEFI, easily as. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed watching this video, and uh, see you next time. And don't forget to drop a like, or I'll be dropping your RTX 3060 <laughs> onto the pavement. So yeah, take care, and don't forget, I will be posting soon, so please leave a sub. T-U-I, T-U-I. Take care, guys.